Thank you. Have you ever wondered what to get somebody really special for Christmas or their birthday? Or to give a gift to someone that has everything, like your parents? Or a really special gift for a baby shower for your very best friend who's having their first baby? Well, I think a homemade rustic quilt is a good idea. Quilting for me started about six years ago when one of my friends got pregnant and wasn't really sure she was happy about it. So in going through that journey of figuring out what she was going to do, at one point during the pregnancy, she brought me a paper bag full of Levi's that she feared she'd never be able to wear again because of the changes in her body. So in order to uplift her and encourage her, I had an idea. What if I cut all those jeans into little squares, add some pink felt or, or flannel, and make a little blanket for her baby, then maybe she could have her jeans with her again, and they would be with her always. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to make my style of a simple rustic quilt that just about anyone can make. And it's just three easy steps. Go shopping, cut the fabric up into little pieces, sew it all back together again. So the first step is to go shopping. You need some yarn, some thread, and about three yards of fabric, and a three foot by four foot piece of this, which is called batting. And I just brought a small piece with me today to kind of show you what it is, and this is the fluffy middle part of the quilt that makes it really soft. You can either choose one color of fabric or several, and this is the one I'm working on now that is going to replace a Harley that my friend was going to buy, but now they're going to have a baby. So this is gonna be the not quite a Harley quilt for their daughter. <laughs> The first step is to go shopping, and these are the items that you need. The second step is to cut all the squares out. And I start by cutting the first piece in a three foot by four foot piece out of the fabric, and that'll be your back. The next step is to cut all the rest of the fabric into little squares this size. And this is actually one of the squares of denim from the very first quilt. And because I've never been shown how to do this, I decided that the best way for me to do this was just to lay the little square down on the fabric and I literally just cut the squares out until I have little stacks of squares and whatever patterns that I have there and they all get cut out into little squares. So the next step when you're done cutting them all into little squares is to sew them into what I call blocks. And these are some examples of blocks. So it's four squares together to make a block. And then when all their blocks are together, you put six in a row. So you would cut, and of course these don't match, but they're just some different samples of some that I have left over. So once you have a row of six blocks, then you continue until you have eight rows of blocks. Then you sew the rows together, and you'll have a perfect rectangle. And that'll be the top of your quilt. And this will be what it will look like, and this is the size it'll be and the back will be, just as I have explained, one three foot by four foot piece. The final step is to put it all together. So you lay the quilt face up like a tablecloth on your table. You put the back face down on top of it so that the, the fabric mirrors itself. So, I get that open. so it mirrors itself like this. And then the final step is to put the batting on top of that. Then you pin around the outside with safety pins or straight pins or whatever you have to secure it and you sew around the edges. Certainly this requires a sewing machine which can be purchased for around $100. It's a nice tool to have to pass on the skill to a daughter or son that you can teach to sew, but it can be done without, without a sewing machine as well. So you sew around all the way around the edges and you leave about 12 inches at the end so you can turn it inside out, much like a pillowcase. Then when you're done turning it inside out, you sew up the last little piece and then you just take some, a needle and some yarn and tie wherever you want to, just to hold it together so that it'll last through the laundry. When I was researching my topic, I went to a quilting store in my area, which if you turn to page 23 in your magazine, you'll see a picture <coughs> of Country Carriage Quilts. And Debbie there was so excited about 
having a speech at Clover Park about quilting that she wanted to send magazines home with all of you that have patterns, ideas of how to quilt. Another thing I learned about quilting from the book The American Quilt is that in the 1800s, quilting was a social event where people got together and worked on quilts together. And they used it as an opportunity to feel social elite, share tea and coffee together, and an opportunity to socialize with ladies even though they lived in the country or in isolated towns. I also learned that you don't really have to go <coughs> shopping to make a quilt. You can use items that you have around the house. In the book, The Quilt That Walked to Golden, I found quilts that were made out of pennants, quilts that were made out of clothing labels, and quilts that were made out of people's clothing, like all your baby's clothes, or grandpa's overalls, or ties. So that was a lot of fun. So basically, I've showed you how just about anyone can make a lovely homemade gift by just going shopping, cutting it into pieces, and sewing it all back together again. And certainly, a homemade gift would have more value than maybe something you could buy at the store.